On today's episode of Locked On Mets for a Friday Farm Report, we are giving out awards to the top prospects that perform well this season with the AA Binghamton Rumble Ponies. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So it has been a few weeks, but we are back with another Friday Farm Report going through the awards in the Mets minor leagues. We did low A, we did high A. Now it is double A Binghamton. Uh, not a great season as a team, as we've talked about. All of these teams kind of struggled, but a lot of great performances up and down. Uh, where should we start off today? We want to start off pitchers, hitters, and this is, of course, Jordan Grossman, I should mention, joining the show, as always, for the Friday Farm Report. Does social media for us over at Locked On Mets and comes on to talk about the Mets farm system. So where should we start today, Jordan? So I wanted to start with let's let's go defender because okay. I'm always a big de- I'm always a big defense guy. So let's start with that. So this is a guy we've talked about in the past. Jake Mangum gets top defender. Uh, obviously, center fielder. Uh, we know four year college player had an illustrious career. Um, and has improved a lot offensively as well. We've talked about Mangum in the past, but defensively, what does he bring to the table as a potential fourth outfielder next season as well? Oh, yeah, absolutely. He's going to be in that fourth outfielder mix with uh, Khalil Lee. We saw um, Kevin Pillar got his mutual option declined, so I'd be surprised if he came back. Um, I really hope the Mets, I've said this before, but I don't like spending guaranteed money on fourth outfielders. I think it just makes sense have those guys on either minor league deals or have prospects in the system try to compete for those jobs in spring training um but yeah Magnum Mangum's always been a uh, a plus defender out in center he uh he's got terrific speed he makes great jumps on the ball um the arm strength isn't amazing but he like I said he makes up for it with uh with the routes and he can get to a lot of balls um he's played all three corner all three outfield spots but uh center field is obviously his best position and, uh, you know, not going to get into his hitting too much, but he's mostly, a, you know, a singles hitter. Um, showed a little bit more pop in double A this year. Uh, he was mostly, uh, he had he was an all-time hits leader, actually, at Mississippi State University. Talked about that illustrious college career. Um, most scouts had like a 25, 30 power grade on him coming into the minors. But now, you know, he hit, I think, seven home runs in 75 games in Binghamton, which is a big jump for a guy like that. So that was pretty impressive to see. Um, we'll see if it continues as he gets to AAA and hopefully the major leagues. Um, but yeah, Mangum, absolutely a fourth outfield to a type that should be in the mix in spring training. Now, forget, he did not uh, get that call to AAA yet at the end of the season, no. or, or he did? No. Fin- so finish, he's finish the season. Yeah. So he'll start the year in AAA. Um, we'll see where he goes from there. Obviously, uh, you know, I, we've talked about it before, like you just said, the the trading for uh, – <laughs> You know, Marisnik and Keon Broxton and then giving a contract to Pilar, it's just a waste of, of resources. I think there is definitely a, a good pull to – or a good uh, you know, start to that competition with Lee and Mangum. Uh, you can sign a couple minor league guys. Uh, I think that they'll be fine. So we'll see what to do there. Uh, we'll stay with defense to go to the, mer- the most versatile player, Yoel Romero. Uh, super utility guy. What does he bring with the bat as well? What do you like about Romero as a prospect? Yeah, so I want to preface this with um, Romero is actually a minor league free agent this offseason. Okay. Uh, the Mets haven't signed him at this point. Um, there's still a chance they could bring him back, but uh, 23 years old at double A, um, had around a 650 OPS. So, you know, there's a chance that they don't bring him back. Uh, but yeah, it's the, the versatility was really strong this year. He played mostly second base and third base, 32 games at second and 24 games at third. But he also mixed in um, eight games at shortstop, uh, four games at first base and three games in right field. So he's, he basically played all over the infield and he can, he has in the past played left field as well. So he can basically play the entire field. Um, but yeah, the, the power is just, the Mets were expecting it to come eventually. He's a big guy, 6'3", I think around 200 pounds. Um, and it just, it never showed up. His career high in the minors is four home runs. So just really dis- disappointing career there. Um, 
yeah, you know, hopefully they bring him back. I've always liked him as a prospect. I think there's a chance that he could break out at some point. Maybe you give him another year. Um, we've seen guys like McNeil just come out of nowhere and just go from, you know, fringe uh, top 50 guys in the system to all of a sudden being the best hitting prospect in the, in the system. I'm not saying it's going to happen with Romero, but you just, you never know with minor leaguers. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with him. But yeah, extremely versatile. Um, mostly, like I said, second base and third base, but can play basically the entire infield. Yeah, and I think that sometimes with these prospects, I mean, I guess if they get an opportunity with another team where there's a, a more clear path to, to make that that leap up to the show, maybe he'd sign elsewhere. But I think a lot of times they like to stay where they're comfortable. So, uh, you know, assuming that uh, is the case with Romero, we could see him back for sure. Uh, let's move over and talk a little bit about the pitching. Uh, I want to get into some of these guys. A uh, first one, I always struggle with this. Top future reliever, Eric Ors, Eric Ors, Ors. Ors. Yeah. All right, Eric Ors. I believe we've discussed him uh, in the past, but what do you like about him as the top future reliever that pitched in Double A this season? Yeah, so we did talk about him before. Um, Ors is a terrific story. He's beaten cancer twice. Um, ben Pickman of Sports Illustrated wrote a terrific article about him a couple of years ago, detailing his journey to the major leagues. Um, sorry, to, I mean, sorry to the minor leagues of just being drafted by an organization. Um, but yeah, he's uh, he struggled his final year in college, but like I said, he was dealing with cancer at the time, and he was just, he was just getting back into the mix of things. So when you look at his college stats, you think, oh, you know, not 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 that big of a deal. But the Mets took a gamble on him, brought him on in the fifth round. Um, really impressed you know, throughout the system. He made he started in Brooklyn and made his way up to uh, the, all the way up to AAA this year, actually. And uh, his best pitch is a splitter. It's what's going to get him to the major leagues. That pitch, I've heard, you know, some scouts say a 70 grade pitch, which is just absolutely insane. It's uh, he was averaging 13.0 K per nine in a uh, double A this year. He only made 11, 11 appearances. Cause like I said, he moved through the system quickly. Um, but yeah, 17 innings and uh, 13.0 K per nine is very impressive. Um, doesn't really walk that many people either. I had a 0 0.5 walks per nine over there. Um, so he he's not he was a starter in college, but the Mets moved him permanently to the bullpen this year. And uh, he's someone who I absolutely think can be a major league believer as soon as um, the start of next season. He's he's ready for it. And that's what the Mets need. You know, I think we talk right now about them building out the bullpen. You know, do you bring back Loop? Do you bring back Familia? All these different guys. But I think when we see some of these teams that have great playoff success and I guess even regular season success to get to the playoffs, a lot of times there's those young relievers that you didn't really know about that can burst onto the scene and, and have a, a really big impact. And I think, uh, you know, even with Familia, we've seen a, a good splitter goes a long way coming out of the pen. So that's pretty exciting. I love Thanksgiving, all of the good food and treats, and dessert is always the best part of any feast, but maybe this year you want a yummy dessert that isn't so full of calories and sugar, which is why it's the perfect time for Built Bars. Built Bar is the new holiday dessert. Feast on something delicious and feel good about it. One slice of pie can be upwards of 300 calories, and that's on the low end. Most Built Bars are only 130 calories with only 4 grams of sugar and plenty of protein. Replace that coconut cream pie with a coconut built bar or go for a raspberry built bar instead of that raspberry pie. There's tons of great flavors that can replace any pie. They come low in calories, low in carbs, low in fat, but they are high in protein and they all come covered in hundred percent chocolate. There's going to be new surprises all month long with limited time flavors arriving at built.com regularly. So check this site often. There's nothing like a built bar black Friday. So mark your calendars because on black Friday, there will be a huge event with all sorts of surprises, go to built.com right now. Use the promo code LOCK15, and you'll get 15% off your next order. Again, that's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. The other pitcher we're going to talk about, or we got a couple, we'll go with top pitch next. Uh, Jose Buto, I saw his numbers were a lot better in double A than they were uh, in, in high A, so he, he had no problem adjusting to, to the league after uh, promotion. Uh, and you like his changeup a lot. Is that changeup a pitch that'll keep him as a starting pitcher? Um, I mean, it's possible. I've heard a lot of people say he's probably a reliever. Um, but you know, and I, I just want to say, like, I could have easily given this award to Ors too. 
Um, but I just didn't want to double up on any of these things. I feel like we should recognize at least one player for each of these awards. Um, so with um, Buto, it's he's a really impressive story. The Mets signed him as an international free agent for $5,000 in 2017. Um, yeah, like you said, he made, I think, eight to ten starts in, being, in uh, Brooklyn. Didn't really impress that much. Had an ERA over four. But then they moved him to uh, Binghamton, which is a little bit of a surprise. But, uh, you know, he's he's 23. So, that, you know, they, it's kind of like a sink or swim situation. You can't you got to make that jump at some point. Um, but he, he impressed over there. He had a 3.12 ERA, uh, 11.2 K per nine. Didn't walk them and he only 2.0 walks per nine. Uh, the FIP was a little bit higher than ERA. So, you know, but it's not the end all be all stat. So um, the fact that he had an ERA like right around three in uh, in 40 innings pitched over in Binghamton was impressive. But yeah, the, the changeup is what we're going to talk about. It has amazing downward action, 80, like 83 to 84 miles per hour, constantly fools hitters, um, has a decent fastball, but it's, uh, you know, it's not really uh, the pitch that he's going to use that much. It's it, his changeup is what's going to get him to the major leagues. Um, I'd say he's a reliever. I, I think I agree with most people who say that. And uh, but but that but that changeup is is really deadly. Yeah, yeah, I, I think uh, like I just mentioned before with with Ors, I just just seeing some of these guys. If you have a plus pitch, right, um, you can in, in the majors come out of a bullpen, you can throw that plus pitch, whatever, sixty percent of the time, and uh, you know if it's a good enough pitch, you'll get hitters out. So that, that's pretty exciting. I think the Mets really need a couple of these guys to pop because. Uh, you know, Brody Van Wagenen did a great job uh, trading all the pitchers to to every single team around baseball. Um, and so, yeah, you, you need some of these guys. You know, Tyler McGill was a good story, struggled down the stretch, but uh, was still you know, all together a good find for the Mets. They need more of those guys. And I think Adam Aller, our pitcher of the year at Double A, uh, could be another one that that pops off. I was really impressed looking at the strikeout numbers for Aller. I was going to say that Cole Gordon – uh, had a claim at the award as well, had a little bit lower ERA, but then I saw the strikeouts with 95 strikeouts and, and 70 some odd innings pitch. So Aller certainly uh, impressed in double A this year. Yeah. So definitely quick shout out to Cole Gordon before we get into Aller. He had, a, he had a great year at Binghamton, but he was definitely in consideration for this award. I, I had a bit of a back and forth with him and Aller. Um, he was he just came out of nowhere. He was also a Mississippi State guy. Him and Mangum actually played together um, in college, and uh, he he put together a great season. But let's let's get into Aller because I, when I looked up some of his the leaderboards for Double A, it really impressed me. I saw that he actually had the second lowest expected FIP in the minor league in uh in the Double A Northeast League, which is and only behind Grayson Rodriguez, who's considered a top ten prospect in all of baseball. He's with uh, the Baltimore Orioles. So that was really cool to see. Um, and uh, also he had the fourth highest K per nine in the double A Northeast uh, at 11.3, which, and th this is also, I should mention that these are for minimum 70 innings pitched. Uh, that was the qualifier. So yeah, really impressive stuff from him. Um, he was a guy who the Mets picked up uh, in the rule five draft in 2019. Pirates let him go. Uh, we know the Pirates have a problem with developing pitching, so that's always been their Achilles heel. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was usually a guy that sat around 89 to 91 with his fastball, but in the last couple of years, he's added some ticks to that, and uh, he's right around, I think, 95, 96 now. Um, the curveball was his main uh, punch-out pitch you know, throughout early college and uh, the minor leagues, but now it's a slider. I heard that that's a big emphasis for the Mets is working on developing that pitch. Um, that's, it's usually 85 to 86 and, uh, just really terrific action on it. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's a guy, he, he's 27 years old, so he's not going to like, you know, someone who has huge upside, but, um, he, he's someone who I, I think could be a really solid depth option as soon as, you know, April, May next year, if, if a starter happens to go down and, uh, they need someone to fill in here and there. Yeah. Oller's definitely a guy who's going to be in that mix. And I just looked up now. He is Rule 5 eligible. So uh, I wonder, uh, is he going to be protected this year? Or is he going to be added to that 40? What would you think about all our making the 40 So there's a ch I think they honestly might protect him just because they need that starter depth. Uh, I think the Mets saw last year how how much it hurt them 
when they had to put Jer- Jared Eikhoff out there, just randomly picking him up and dropping him, just how important depth is and having good depth, not just depth in general. Um, and, and Aller's good depth. You see the numbers that he's putting up in the minor leagues. Um, so there's definitely a chance that they protect him. Um, but it, there's also, you know, you could see easily another team scooping him up and just let, like a bad team just putting him on their major league roster and hoping for the best. Pittsburgh. <laughs> get, 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 lost him in a rule five, get him back in a rule five. Oh, what a story that would be. It would be. Um, all right. So now we're going to get to a couple more players that we've talked about. Uh, we'll start with top slugger, Carlos Rincon. This is the prospect the Mets got in the Billy McKinney trade. Uh, another guy that I think they may have to protect in the Rule 5 draft, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so so what do you think about that and, and the season he had in AA once it came to the Mets? Yeah, so I also want to mention with him is that I could have very easily given this award to Mark Vientos. Um, he's, but uh, what you, you guys are going to hear in a couple of minutes, uh, Vientos won another award that I think is a little bit more important. Um, so with... With uh, Rincon, it was pretty impressive what they were able to do. You know, McKinney, obviously, we saw that he struggled towards the end of his career uh, with the Mets. And uh, they, you know, they, they just shipped him off to L.A. They, I was surprised they even got a prospect back. I thought they were just going to get cash. Um, but Rincon came over here, hit really, really well, had a 537 slugging percentage, uh, 10 home runs in 38 games, 128 weighted runs created plus. Uh, this is a guy who had an 830 OPS total. Um, in 101 games at Double A this year, still just 23 years old, so could could be a, a name to watch as like a fourth outfield type. Um, maybe if he brings even a little bit more power, he's a guy you consider an everyday player. But like you said, yeah, I don't know if they're going to protect him. It's a tough call. If I just if I had to guess right now, I'd say no, just because the Mets just have so many other concerns right now with the major league roster that I don't think protecting a guy like that is their uh, biggest. Uh, the biggest goal right now so yeah I, I just i don't see them protecting him hopefully he's able to pass through the rule five um and they can they can keep him and promote him to triple a so uh yeah it's it, it it'll be tough but I, I i'd like to see him stay in the system yeah i mean i think that's why you got him to be completely honest the dodgers obviously had such a, a full roster that they probably knew that you know there wasn't a great chance that they would be able to keep him and that there would be a good chance another team might claim him and so you give up on them and and you, you get a player that they needed that year, Billy McKinney. And for the Mets, now you're going to have to weigh those same, those same questions. I think the fact that he hit really well after the trade gives him a better shot than we probably would have expected when the Mets initially made the trade. But, yeah, it's definitely a tough call because you still have to leave room to make these other additions, right? You still have to leave room for free agents you might bring in. And there's a lot that has to happen. I also think – it's going to be interesting the way this offseason plays out with free agency maybe happening a little bit earlier. Like we could see Javi Baez sign next week. I mean, this is because there's guys that might want to grab their money before the CBA and the potential, uh, you know, lockdown or or strike. So it's going to be interesting. Do you know when they would have to uh, protect players for the Rule 5? When is that date? Do you have so, any idea? I believe it's right around uh, November 19th i think it's like a week or it's like a week maybe 10 days away something like that so yeah it's getting close yeah so we'll see if uh what the mets look like i I would say that before that date you could potentially add two guys into the 40 and noah Syndergaard and javi baez that would have to be factored in and then you got to figure out what you're going to do with the rest of these prospects bet online is back and better than ever now featuring a new web interface for the start of the basketball season that has more props odds and lines than ever before BetOnline remains your number one spot for all the basketball and football action this season. Head to their new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit just by using the promo code Locked On. From basketball to football, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports, bet online, where the game starts. We've sort of buried the lead because uh, everyone loves to talk about these guys. Uh, and Mark Vientos, of course, had a monster year, player of the year in double A. Uh, I know how much you love Vientos and his power swing, but uh, what did you think about his season overall? 
I, I've been the president of the Mark Vientos fan club since 2016 when I watched him at uh, American Heritage High School down in Florida. He was some, someone I, I fell in love with as a prospect right away. And I was super pumped when the Mets took him in the second round back in 2017. And uh, what he was able to do this year, people are finally starting to put some respect on his name. Like, look, look at the kind of numbers he was able to put up. I mean, he struggled his first 10, 12 games in double A, you know, some people were concerned that the Mets, uh, you know, pushed him a little bit too hard with double A because, you know, they made, they made him jump from, he didn't, he just skipped high A entirely. Um, but then his last 55 games in Binghamton, he hit 306 with a 376 on base percentage and a 651 slugging, which is just ridiculous for, for a 21 year old kid, like at, at any level. And, uh, he has 144 weighted runs created plus was fourth in double a Northeast with a minimum of 300 plate appearances. And two of the names ahead of him were actually Adley Rutschman and Riley green, who are considered top five prospects in all of baseball. So just for him to be up there with those kind of names is super, super impressive. Um, Vientos has always had really good power. I mean, back in 2018, I saw a report that minor league scouts had his uh, exit bill numbers up there with, guys like Juan Soto, Fernando Tatis, and Vlad Guerrero Jr. when they were in the minors. So just always really impressive stuff from him. Um, and something that really stood out to me this year was the way he was going oppo. You know, he's not a guy who really likes to pull for power. Uh, he actually had a really good article, um, did an interview with uh, David Laurel of Fangraphs. I recommend everyone check that out. And uh, he talked about how he loves going the other way. So I I'll, I'll pull a quote right here. He says, I know my game and my power is center, right field, right field, left center. Personally, I don't try to pull a ball. I try to hit everything up the middle that keeps my hands inside instead of yanking the ball. It also helps me recognize spin a lot more because I'm letting the ball travel deeper, which is, you know, it's a really cool thing to hear because we hear so many people complain about players that just pull the ball way too much when they're, when they're looking for power. And Vientos is a guy who loves going the opposite way. And it's, you know, it's a bit of a breath of fresh air, you know, for the, for the anti-analytics crowd who, uh, who, like I said, they just can't stand all the pulling that's going on in baseball. Yeah, and you know what? If you are able to hit the ball to all fields, they can't shift on you. And, and then everything's open for you. You can hit those gaps. Uh, it's definitely something that is really valuable. Uh, I want to get your take on what I've been talking about recently, where I feel like Mark Vientos is at the same point in his career as Pete Alonso was heading into the 2019 season, where everyone's doubting him defensively. All he's hearing right now is – the one thing standing in the way of being an impact player at, at, on a major league roster is the glove. Isn't there a chance that this guy devotes his offseason to picking up third base or left field and could shock us and win a job in spring training? Yeah, I think that's what the Mets are hoping for right now because, you know, Pete Alonso is actually a pretty good comp. Um, Vientos definitely has the best power in the system since Pete Alonso. Um, it was, you know, the, the, the things that he's able to do is ridiculous. Uh, with that bat so uh i don't i don't know um if he's ever going to be an above average defender i think if he like you said he really works on his on his defense maybe third base left field first base whatever it is um he can be maybe slightly below average or maybe even you know just getting to average but yeah it's, it, it, it'll be tough for him but i i think he has the you know the work ethic to get to that point uh in the next year or two yeah, I think that there. I just can't rule out that these guys can get better, especially defensively. You know, uh, you can't teach the pop that Mark Vientos has, but you can teach someone how to play third base. And I'm not saying he's going to win a Gold Glove. I'm certainly not saying that. I'm not saying he's even going to post a, a positive outs above average next year. But can we get him just slightly better than JD Davis? <laughs> like, it, it here, here's my question: Have you seen? Does he double clutch every throw? Does he have that problem or no? <laughs> uh, no, no, that's not really a problem for him. It's really the range that, that that's a problem. He's got so all right. So he's better than Davis, in my opinion, <laughs> right there. I mean, listen, he's, it's gonna he's gonna be a lot more like JD Davis than he is gonna be like Matt Chapman. I'll just I'll I'll say that. <laughs> okay, that that's fair. That's fair. But he is our player of the year. He's gonna start next season, likely in AAA. If he's not moved in a trade for a Matt Chapman or, or somebody along those lines this off season, Jose and, Ramirez. Uh, yeah, Jose Ramirez, that's a, that's a future podcast for sure. We got to get into that at some point this offseason. But, uh, you know, like I said, I, I think Vientos has a, has a chance to, to be a really interesting piece 
of the 2022 Mets if he sticks around. And uh, I'm excited to see where he could end up factoring into their plans next year. So definitely a player we'll be watching along with all of these guys. And that was another Friday Farm Report with Jordan Grossman. Why don't you let everyone where they can find your work? So you can find me at Locked on Mets, working with you, obviously, and Josh Finkelstein. Um, you know, we just got our YouTube page up to 500 subscribers, you know, big celebration there. We're hopefully going to get to a thousand. It's going to be the next, next benchmark. Um, you can find my work also on Facebook at we are Mets believers. And then my Twitter, you can see if we're watching on YouTube, um, at Mets fans since Oh two. There you go. And like you just mentioned, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe. (laughs) 